an edition of Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. Recently, uh, just in the past couple of days, the ACEC Research Institute uh, released the first of a, a first of its kind study to profile and measure our sector of the economy. It's really the first time that we've actually been able to have an accurate profile and measurement uh, of the entire engineering and architecture and its related services, that sector of the economy, the size, scope, and economic impact, and it's, and it's quite significant. Right now, the report is available on the ACEC Research Institute homepage, and you can get that uh, right by going to acec.org as well. You'll see a banner ad up on the top of the homepage that will take you right to the report. Uh, but we really want to dig into this by um, two of the individuals who are key in developing this report. We are joined by John Gray. He's the principal at Rockport Analytics and uh, Joseph Bates with the ACEC Research Institute. So welcome to you both. So Joe, I want to start with you. Um, this is a groundbreaking study because nothing of this scope and scale has really been undertaken before. Can you walk us through some of the key highlights of the report? Sure, Jeff. We, as you said, this was a first of its kind type of study, really looking at the engineering and architectural services industry as a whole, much bigger than just ACEC membership would represent. So we took this very large view. And one of the key findings is just how large this industry is. It's a $386 billion industry. That's huge. That's a wonderful contribution to our economy. And in terms of the number of people that this sector employs, directly the sector employs one and a half million Americans. But when you take into consideration those who are directly, as well as the downstream effects of employment, there's four and a half million people whose jobs are supported by the AE services industry. So those are two really key points right there. Another point that I think is equally as important, especially when we're talking about the policy side and the tax revenue implications for governmental entities, this sector generates $45 billion in tax revenue. And that's you know at all, the, all levels, federal, state, local, et cetera. So this industry is a main driver of the economy. So I think that's probably the biggest takeaway from this report. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a significant amount of tax revenue, especially at a time when, you know, we're looking at an economy that is undergoing some challenges uh, writ large with the pandemic. And, you know, our policymakers and our elected officials, especially coming into a new year, a new Congress and an incoming administration are looking at ways to stimulate the economy. So when you have an industry in a sector that is already so active and contributing so greatly to job creation and, and, and just economic activity and, and revenue generation, it should kind of signal a, a place for, for policymakers to, to focus. You know, John, let me, let me ask you, what should a, a lay person take away from this? What do you think if you're someone who's just, you know, coming into this fairly fresh, you know, what's the big takeaway for, for, for someone like that for this report? Yeah, sure, Jeff. So I think there, there are a couple of things, and, and Joe hit on some of, some of the big ones in terms of the size of the industry. Um, it's a, a big part of what we're doing with this research. One of the key objectives uh, is to create a launching pad that we can do some other research from. So um, we're working on uh, an economic contribution report. We're working on a forecast. And so we really wanted to go out and measure the size of the market uh, for starters. And there's a number of different ways that we can measure the size of the sector. Um, one is, is just looking at gross sales or revenue, right? And, the, and that we all understand. Those are the total sales that AE services uh, firms engage in throughout a, a year's period of time. Joe mentioned 300 86 billion, just an enormous amount of revenue that's generated by, by the industry. Uh, another is in, in the jobs. And so Joe talked about one and a half million jobs uh, directly employed at AE services firms, another four and a half million 
uh, when you consider the supply chain and the income impacts that, uh, that AE services has on the US economy. And then we look at value added or what, what, does the, what do we directly contribute in terms of AE services to US GDP? And so simply put, value added is taking those sales numbers and then stripping out all of the, all of the parts of the production that come from sectors outside of AE services. So there's the supply chain of AE services. And so those dollars, we don't want to double count. We want to just look at the value added, the new dollars, the new production that AE services uh, adds to the US economy. Um, we want to back out things like transportation that, that gets counted in those sales numbers. So all of those things are distilled out and we, we measure that even once we back all those things out, $229 billion in value added to US GDP is made directly by the AE services sector. Yeah, and that's, that, that's a big number. And it just shows again that it's not just a direct work that the sector is performing, but it's all the inputs that go into that work. So yeah, absolutely. It's all the other industries that, that AE services touches that, that we might not think about. I mean, obviously there's construction, but mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a lot of both end markets to AE services that, uh, that, that AE firms are supporting, as well as a lot of supply chain folks in, in different sectors that are supplying goods and services. Uh, to allow AE services to make their contribution to the built environment. I also want to talk about methodology uh, because this this study, like I said, it's it's you know it's kind of a landmark study in itself. Can you kind of talk about the methodology and the data that you used and kind of walk us through how you reached some of the conclusions in the report? Uh, we can start with uh, with John and 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 go to Joan. Sure. Yeah. So. In terms of methodology and data sources, you know, for, for this study in particular, this component of the research, we're not doing any primary survey research. Uh, we're not building forecast models. We're really using a lot of existing data sources and what we call triangulating all of those data sources. So those are private sources. We use things like uh, Dun and Bradstreet, mm -hmm. uh, which goes out and, and collects data on, on U.S. businesses, uh, various different metrics across those businesses. Um, we, we use a source called Dodge Data and Analytics that specifically looks at, at construction data. I'm, I'm sure many of the listeners are very familiar yep. with Dodge Data and understanding and, and them on. Yeah. Types. Those guys, that, yep, they, they've been on and they're, they're, they're one of the primary sources. So yes, that's yeah, very well so known. Obviously a key input to the work that we're doing is also to look at where that construction activity is happening, uh, specifically where it's happening across what states and what are these different project types and then looking at a forecast of that construction activity, a very important input or data source for our research. And then we're looking at a lot of publicly available sources. So uh, the U.S. Census Bureau, uh, you know, statistics on U.S. businesses. We're looking at national income and product accounts uh, as reported by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. Um, so there's a lot of different data sources that go into this. The, the problem with some of these data sources is um, there are different data collection methods. Um, there are different definitions with how the industry is measured. Um, there's timing issues. Some of these data sources are collected on a quarterly basis or a monthly basis. Other data sources on an annual basis. Uh, some data sources, we have a, a large history uh, going back 20, 30 years and others uh, they've just started collecting data like this over the last few years. And so the, the methodological challenge is really in the data collection and then understanding what the, the shortcomings of these various different data sets are and looking for strengths in the other data sets and triangulating all of them so we can pull together a robust picture of the sector and a composition of the industry as a whole. And, and I think that you kind of outlined why this is a landmark study because it hasn't really been approached in that way because you know like you said there are a lot of ways you can find this data 
but the question it's like going in is the, you know you have everything is just a, a, a you know a, a pile of data and you have to sort through it organize it and 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 prioritize it and and make sense of it which is not an easy task um so that's that also underscores the importance of this study because for for the first time it actually does like you said triangulate all this data to provide an accurate industry profile and measurement of its of its size and impact um Joe, is, is there anything to, to add on that from the, uh, from the methodological side of things? I think one of the important things for people to understand is, and I alluded to it earlier in my comment, that we're not just looking at a small piece of the industry. We're not just looking at ACEC membership. We're not just looking at engineering. We're looking at architectural and engineering services sector. This is the largest lens that we can take. And I think that is also part of the landmark nature of this study. So let me ask about um, kind of a comparison question. Uh, like you said, we're looking, we're taking that wide lens and we're looking at this sector and it's and it's and, and this piece of the economy. How does it compare to other sectors in terms of jobs and contribution of GDP? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Uh, and, and so, you know, we've talked about its size and scope, you know, uh, 386 billion in sales. Um, so we're talking about roughly 2% of, of US GDP is generated by AE services, um, and about 3% of employment when we consider the direct, indirect and induced jobs. So extremely important in terms of uh, uh, AE services as a sector and a driver of the economy. And we're going to be doing uh, a deeper dive on that type of research in the, in the second phase of this work. Um, but there's some other things that, that we found in the research um, that, that were interesting in terms of the comparisons with AE services to other sectors. Um, the growth in AE services has been tremendous over the last 15 years, growing faster uh, than, than the economy on average. Uh, there has been more volatility that we've seen in AE services. You know, not surprisingly, uh, as tied as, as AE services is to the construction industry. And so we have to go through a lot of these housing booms and busts. We know we had a major one through, through the Great Recession and the housing crisis. And so that was really uh, magnified, you know, the impact of, of construction on AE services. And, and so the highs have been high, the lows have been lows, but when you look at that on average over the last 15 year, growth of the industry has been uh, extremely strong. Um, another point about AE services is it's not as capital intensive as some other sectors. So I've talked about construction, we know construction manufacturing, um, very capital intensive uh, sectors of the economy where AE services is really dependent on human capital. Um, and uh, the human capital is what drives the industry. And that means that a lot of those dollars stay here in the US, right? Um, the human capital are employed by US firms um, and they're paid a, a wage. Uh, on average, uh, $80,000 uh, is the wage paid to AE services employees compared to $60,000 yeah. uh, across all US sectors. And so that has a larger outsized impact and it's something that can't be exported, right? Um, because it's not capital intensive, it's not like manufacturing where you can go find a lower cost producer and just find uh, goods uh, overseas somewhere. It really is produced here in the US and it's the intelligence and the human capital that's really driving the industry. So it has an outsized economic impact for that yeah. reason. That's, that's a really important point because that's, that's a continual issue that comes up about STEM and, and just in general is the availability of STEM professionals coming up through the ranks in, in college and making sure that we have a supply of that. And this report underscores the importance of that, if that, you know, we are an a, a intellectual capital or a human capital intensive sector. 
um, instead of just, like you said, being more intensive in, in, in actual, you know, physical capital. So having a having an open line uh, to promote uh, more people getting involved in STEM related fields uh, will help uh, maintain and expand uh, uh, the industry's growth over over time. Um, Joe, is there anything else that you want to add on 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 you know other findings and and, and things that you you were really kind of interested or surprised to see uh, after the study came out? I think there's two other things that are really important. One question that we kept being asked by people who are helping us define the study and the scope of the study is what percentage of this sector is architectural services versus engineering services? And so we were able to answer that question with this study. Roughly two thirds of employment, revenue, et cetera. And again, it's a rough, you know, two thirds is attributed to engineering services. And I think that was probably surprising to a lot of people that the engineering services was such a large piece of the pie. Yeah. I think the other really interesting and important finding of this study is these jobs in the sector are very well paid jobs. The average wage salary for a typical American worker is around, you know, 50 to $60,000 per year. The typical average salary in this sector, and, and again, it's average across, you know, the admin assistant all the way to the CEO, but the average is 88,000. So we're talking about roughly a 50% increase over the typical American job. Yeah. So these are very well-paid people in this sector. And I think that's another important and aspect of why this sector is so important to the American economy. Absolutely. Without question. Um, I, everybody says, you know, good paying jobs, where can, you know, where can we maintain and grow good paying jobs? Well, this is a, a perfect example of a, a sector that attracts, you know, talent to John's point, educated here, may, you know, kept here. We, we maintain that talent in the country and then we uh, we employ them in a sector that that has an average you know above average wage that uh, helps generate you know local economic activity and 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 helps with the tax base so it again shows the importance of the industry from a from a micro and macro economic level um, and, and we're attracting people from other countries absolutely the industry. yeah uh, you, because we we aren't actually producing enough of our homegrown folks in this industry when it comes to engineers and as you talked about with STEM. So it clearly shows that there's ample opportunity in America for people to grow into this sector um, just from the sheer fact that we're bringing people from outside the country yeah. because we don't have enough people here. Yeah, yeah. And the policy issues that relate to that, I mean, because again, also, and individuals who come to the United States uh, to, to learn at American educational institutions get advanced degrees and specializations that the sector needs here, but um, return and then have issues coming back into the United States, uh, which is one of the things you know, you know with ACDC advocacy is, is is a policy point that we try to make that you know this is this is important to maintain American competitiveness. Um, so I, I know that this is not just a, a study that stands on its own. Uh, this is the first of a series of studies. It's, it's really the research institutes, I, I'd say, first actual research product of this kind of scope. Um, that this is this is this is why the research institute is doing what it's doing is to put out leading quantitative and qualitative information in general. That if you want business information about the engineering sector. The research institute is going to be the leading place to get that. So this 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 report really kind of puts the flag in the ground and says that you know we're here and we're gonna we're gonna continue on with this. There are three studies in total. I guess is going to make up this whole you know the, the 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 scope of this project. Can you give us a sneak peek about what we're going to learn in the next two studies coming up? Sure. And, and you're absolutely right. You know, this is the, the first of its kind. It's the, the flagship that we're, you know, sticking this flag in the sand. And it's one of three reports, the trifecta of economic reports. So 
The first is really, as we discussed, to help understand what this industry looks like. The second report, as John alluded to earlier, is more information about the economic contribution that this industry sector makes to the economy. It has more about jobs. It has more about revenues. It has more about tax revenues. It really dives into how this industry is helping to drive the American economy. And then the third and final piece that we'll be publishing is a forward-looking forecast. So we will come out in the economic contribution study with the economic contribution of this industry for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And that last third report is going to show what our forecast is for this industry for the next five years. And again, nothing like that has ever been done before with this sector. Yeah. And, and that's critical because that's the kind of information people really want. Um, and, and, and to be able to look ahead and say, this is the growth. And, and finally be able to say that, you know, like you said, looking over 20 years, this has been the contribution to the economy. I mean, we're really putting, uh, uh, we're really framing up what the industry is and we're, and we're delivering, uh, you know, accurate information that really hasn't been there before. And it's going to help not only business leaders, but policymakers. It's going to help researchers, academics uh, to really better understand the sector and its impact. So the work that both uh, you, Joe, and, and, and Jonathan and the Institute is doing is, is really important. Um, and, and congratulations on, on the study. I, this is a long time coming and, and to finally see it uh, released is great. So congratulations to you both. Thanks so much, Jeff. Yep, thank you. It's been, it's been a lot of work, but it's also been uh, very interesting. We've, we've learned a lot and, and, and we'll continue to grow as we grow this and we learn more about, and, and you know, the thing with, with a research project like this is it always begs almost as many questions as it answers, you know? And so uh, I think it will continue to evolve as we learn more and, and we'll continue to be able to grow it and, and help, help all stakeholders uh, have a better understanding of, of, these, of the economic impact of the industry and uh, on a regular basis, be able to check in on where we think the industry is going and why. Uh, Joseph Bates, Jonathan Gray, Thank you so much for being with us and we look forward to uh, having you on uh, for the next survey release. Thanks, Jeff, appreciate it. Yeah, have a, a great new year and uh, stay safe out there. And um, uh, we will see you again on our next episode. This has been Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. We'll see you next time.